In this online lecture, we will cover literature organizing and synthesis. This is timed close to your outline assignment because uh, some of the methods we will use for organizing the literature findings uh, have been useful to people in making their outlines and then you'll also learn how to start synthesizing those results that you're getting um, from your literature review efforts. First, I want to take a step back and remind you all of some material we talked about in the very first week of class. What is a literature review? And so as you all are, are working on a topic and, and you know, finding results and finding papers and starting to think about them and summarize them, I want to bring us back to the main point. So a literature review is an assessment of the scientific findings on a specific topic or question. It's based on primary sources. Papers written by scientists performing experiments and reporting findings. So this is not an online newspaper article or a blog or uh, even a peer-reviewed literature review. It is um, a collection of peer-reviewed experiments, individual findings from different researchers. And our goal is to knit them together into a synthesis. So the assessment should be synthetic. That means that we're making evidence to commentary beyond just summarizing the results. So what do these individual findings mean together? How are they speaking to each other? You recall that we likened this to putting together pieces of a puzzle. So those individual peer-reviewed findings are like puzzle pieces. And the first step we're going to do today is characterizing them, summarizing them. What is the color? What is the shape? Um, and and then we move a step forward. This is the synthesis part. So we, we don't just stick with, I have six gray pieces, three blue pieces, seven teal pieces. I want to say, wow, when I put these together, it starts to make this picture. Or it could be making this picture, but there's a hole right here. Or people are disputing the picture that these things are making. There are dis disparate, different results um, going on here. And so... Um, this this evidence kind of critiquing and having these pieces in conversation with each other is what we're getting after here. And today we're going to share some specific tools of how we start to go about doing this. Another reminder that we're performing a systematic review. We bring together all empirical evidence that fits pre-specified eligibility criteria. It's using explicit systematic methods that are selected with a view of minimizing bias, providing more reliable findings. Methods include search terms, inclusion criteria, and the search engine that are included are all included in the text. So this is the methods paragraph that we had you write in the topic paragraph and it is also going to be included in your full uh, draft of your literature review. A literature review involves searching and gathering the literature on your pre-specified criteria, presenting the literature in an organized style with sections and subsections. So the sections and subsections is something that we're definitely going to be looking at uh, when we grade your outline assignment. And then synthesizing the information you gathered in an evidenced critical analysis. What is the state of the field? Are there controversies? What's the need for future research? Here again is the flowchart of how the literature review process works. So you start with a controversy or a question, you notice a pattern. Then you formulate specific topic and scope. You refine the questions, modify the scope. This is probably where all of you are at at this moment. And then we collect and organize findings, write and summarize and synthesize and rewrite until our story and our message and our writing are really clear. This again is how the assignments in this class relate to this process. So we've done the topic statement, topic paragraph, problem statement, and we are at the outline now where we're collecting and organizing our findings. And then soon we'll have the full draft of our peer review and we will begin the revising process. So now I'll move into this specific activity of organizing and synthesis. You will follow the steps outlined in this lecture to organize and synthesize six of the peer-reviewed references from your own literature review. You'll upload a picture of your final project to the associated assignment link. Before you begin, 
get some sticky notes. Sticky notes are the primary organizational tool we will use today. Uh, you can find them in three ways. You can use a sticky notes program on your computer, download a touchscreen sticky notes app, or get a stack of sticky notes and a pen. So in this example, I am in the trenches with you. Uh, I um, have collected literature for, uh, for a manuscript I'm writing. I need to do a literature review as the introductory material for that. And I want to go through some of the same steps that you should be going through um, from my own project. So my background, um, just a bit of my own topic paragraph, if you will, is that microbial activity in the soil is important for understanding how forests respond to fire as microbes carry out decomposition in shallow soil where fire is likely to have the most impact. It's unclear how the severity or time since fire alter microbial responses. My goal statement, the goal of this review is to understand how forest fire severity and time since fire alter microbial community structure and function. And so um, this might be different in scope than yours because I was not limited to only 25 sources, but um, I have written a goal as you should all have a goal written at the end of your introduction. The goal of this review is da da da. We want to see that nice and clear so that your objectives are very clear to your readers in your writing. Um, then you also see I use the web of science with a series of different keywords and results were screened to return citations and admit those that were not relevant or were only marginally relevant to my goal. So step one, these are my six papers. See, they're all from peer-reviewed literature, and they are all primary literature in that each of these was an individual experiment that was conducted. So the next step, step two, is to organize the information. So what, in summary, was the main finding or approach of each of my studies? What other relevant information do I need for classifying and organizing my papers? Uh, a table or a database is really helpful for this step. And so I actually have made a table of my six papers as a first step in this. Now you can see in the first column that I have uh, sh a shorthand of just the first author in the year so that I can still keep track of those individual papers. And I made two more columns. I have kind of a what they did because I care about the severity and the time. And I also have a sentence or two about what they found. So this is really boiling down a nugget of the key findings of each of these papers so that I can start to compare them to each other. Um, I want to point out that even making this table was iterative. So yeah, I went through one stage of this myself and what they found, you know, wasn't always um, very evident. And so for example, with the Zhang paper at the top, and this is why I have an asterisk here, you know, they focused on, um, you know, they, they focused only on time. So that was the main story. And so I had to kind of dig through this paper to find out the fire severity that they looked at so that um, I could then compare the fire severity in that paper to the fire severity in the other papers that I looked at. And so it's possible that you might have to kind of dig in your papers to find the information you need for comparing one paper to another. Um, and so I, I kept working on this table until I felt like I had similar information across the studies that I can compare to each other. So then the next step is pretty simple. I, simp I take these um, summaries and I just put them on sticky notes. So get out your sticky notes. And here are my sticky notes. So now I have each of these papers and I have even a more condensed version of this, but I have uh, you know, a short statement at the top of what they did and then I have a longer statement at the bottom about what they found. So now I have my papers in a way that I can start arranging or rearranging them as makes sense to me. And that brings us to step four. So now what I have done is I have moved these six papers into two groups. So in this case, I had three papers, the ones in yellow, 
that look at the 16S DNA based um, analysis of microbial community structure. So I have three papers that looked at community structure and then I have three papers that I have colored in blue for ease of, of looking at the groups that measure microbial decomposition and decomposition enzyme activities. And so um, to me, this was the most logical way of organizing these groups. I also could have organized them in a different way in terms of you know, what are the time responses and what are the fire severity responses? That would be another way of categorizing these. Um, and so for each of your individual projects, you will have different categories or subsections that make the most sense to your specific goal. So you should be clear on your goal and your organization, but each of you will be unique in what organization makes the most sense to you. Now we will move on to step five. So we have our groups organized and now we're going to summarize and synthesize each group separately. So you see I have added another sticky note now to each group. Um, first, simply write the overall findings as bullet points as I've done for the yellow and blue groups. Then think about the broader meaning of the results together. Here's some questions you can ask. What could they mean about your overall study question or about the system together? Um, how are these results talking to each other to take a more philosophical bent on it? In my case, I asked myself, what together do these results mean about how microbial communities respond to fire, either in terms of the microbial community structure or function? And so for the yellow group here, I have these summarizing bullet points, severe fires alter microbial community structure, low severity fire did not alter microbial community composition or structure, um, and differences in microbial community structure were not present 11 years after fire. Um, and then the summary for the blue group, microbial enzyme activity is lower after fire, decomposition is also lower after fire, and the change seems to be related to changes in the microbial community. And decomposition activity stays lower in burned forests even seven years after fire. So then what I have done for each of these groups separately is to synthesize them. So beyond just the summary of what they're saying, I'm going to add my, my own opinion, my own evidenced value statement. And so for the yellow group, um, microbial community structure seems to be adapted or resistant to fire despite initial or early responses. Microbial community structure consistently changes after severe fire. However, after time, differences in microbial community structure in burned stands disappear. And microbial community structure does not change in response to only low severity fires. And so this is a bigger picture of what's going on. I'm not saying, you know, X studies showed this, whereas X, Y, Z studies showed that. I'm saying this is what they mean together. Um, and then for the blue group, fire decreases decomposition and the microbial enzyme activity is responsible for decomposition across multiple ecosystem types. Uh, these decreases in decomposition persist, persist even several years after fire. And so here I also want to note that I have left off some of the results. So the Holden study, they... Um, looked at decomposition, but they also did a reciprocal transplant study. And I decided that that would make more sense to include later when I summarize both groups together, but right now it doesn't fit into the synthesis. And so, you know, I'm, I'm evidencing what I want to say, but I'm being selective about the information as well. So, so then our final step uh, step six is to synthesize. Again, we're going to ask some questions. Asking questions of these results is, is where we start to get to this synthesis. Is there a larger meaning of these papers together? Is there a pattern? Is there a hole in the information? What happens when you put these pieces of information in conversation with each other? So, so what are they saying together? What do I see as the pattern emerging? And so 
here's a synthesis between the two groups um, where you're going to have 25 full references. If, if you have six papers in one of your subsections, this could perhaps be a summary of that section uh, or the title sentences in the section of the paragraph, you know, if your synthesis is shorter than mine. So here's my total synthesis. Both microbial community structure and decomposition functions are altered by fire with a negative response in the case of decomposition, where the microbial community structure exhibits only transient or short-term responses to fire microbial functional changes may last over much longer time periods. Despite the difference in longevity between these two types of microbial response to fire reciprocal transplant study demonstrated that both initial changes in microbial community structure enzyme production after fire may be responsible for longer term changes in decomposition. And so here, as I had mentioned, there is one result that brings together some of these pieces of information. And so now I have chosen that study to highlight the synthesis that I want to make. And so I'm not just repeating the results of that study, but I'm I'm using it as a case to point out the point I want to make. And all along the way here, in all of my syntheses, where necessary or where relevant, I've still included the references so that I'm backing up my, my opinions uh, with evidence. That's really important. So in summary, there are six in steps to this process. Um, Collecting the information, uh, you probably all should have done that already. Step two, organize information. Put the relevant information of each study into a sticky note. Organize or group these sticky notes. Summarize the subgroups. Write a synthesis statement. And then, step seven, upload your picture of your step six to Canvas. So this picture is what you will submit for your assignment for this activity. And with that, as usual, come see us if you have any questions, and good luck with this assignment.